Yo, what up everyone? In this video, I wanna talk about the best times to trade and why it's key to understand this in order to take better trades and to not take trades which could have been avoided that usually result in a big frustrating loss. I will say it is as important to know when not to trade as it is knowing when the proper conditions are to trade. And I've seen many traders not realize the conditions that they're in and how they need to trade differently in order to become successful. Before we get into the charts and the psychology backing this, all I ask is if I provide any value to your trading, I would appreciate a thumbs up on this video and I will link my Instagram in the description below at Investitrade. For those that don't follow this, I post daily trading recaps on here along with very good trading tips and tricks that I guarantee you aren't gonna find anywhere else. Link in the description below. You're definitely missing out if you're not following it. But now let's get right into this video. What I've noticed in my trading journal is the trades that I make the most amount of money on, the best trades that I take, and the ones that I feel the most confident on all have three common similarities. So the first two are kind of similar. I wanna go over these first. Um, so the best trades that I take all happen around the same t time we could call it, where these two conditions present the best opportunities in my opinion. The first one is when there is structure in the market meaning when I could properly read the context and understand the story behind the market, whether it be my supply demand zones, whether it be just the auction process of the market and comparing price and volume, when I could properly read this in the context and put the pieces of the story that the market's presenting us together, I take very good quality A plus trades. And when I add it's the icing on the cake, when I understand the relationship between price and volume, I know the participation between buyers and sellers, and I'm able to gauge the strength between either side. I don't care if it's bullish. I don't care if it's bearish. If I could properly read that and know which side is winning the tug of war battle or which side is showing more effort, which side is showing more or getting more reward, then I could understand the relationship and really get the structure and understand the story backing the market. And that's when I take the best trades. So I want to go over the action from Monday, January 31st. Uh, this was in the pre-market plan. I post these every single day in the Discord, setups I'm watching, levels I'm looking out for, and potential trading scenarios that happen in real time. So what I'm going to go over here is going to be on the S&P 500 specifically. Everything I talk about in this video relates to any market, any stock, Apple, Amazon, Tesla, this is how the market facilitates trade. So we have structure. Why I post my plans is basically to give me structure of the levels I'm looking out for. This is the structure and this is the market context. And then I use price and volume to kind of gauge what's going on in the market. That's why I use these two key points together because without my levels of interest, supply, demand, or support and resistance, then I don't have my where I'm looking to trade at. And if I don't have price and volume, being able to read what's going on and no buyers and sellers, then I don't have my theory, AKA when to enter the trade. So in the pre-market plan I posted on Monday, which is yesterday, the day I'm recording this video, uh, I said for me to be bullish, I would like a strong volume break above the 4436 to 40 or any demand created above 4400 to 412. And I will look to play long on a move up. If this is true, we could see a rally into 4467 supply and then the supply above that. So now why these levels were key, I'm gonna pull up a five minute chart here, is for the following reasons. So let's get a larger time frame view of the market just to see what was going on. So last week we had a, or past two weeks, we had a continuous sell off, putting in lower lows, putting in lower highs. And eventually the market found the bottom with very heavy volume, I love to see that. And we created demand on the way down and then the move up validated that demand. So now we have a key area of demand. I said this in the invest -to trade webinar we did over the weekend that this 4263 area is very key for the market to bounce at and or put in a higher low, which we did it two different times. Now, last week as well, we had the FOMC meeting where the market made a very aggressive drop to the downside, a very aggressive sell off with some heavy volume. So this validated a supply zone and from Monday to about Thursday, the market was in a very, very tight range where we had supply at the highs 
and demand at the blow uh, at the lows. I love to see the market range bound because usually the move after balance, aka consolidation or range, gives us a good piece of information about the market. So supply above, demand below. The following day on Thursday of F FOMC, myself, other members of the Discord, I think I even made a video on this, absolutely destroyed the short side playing puts or a bearish position inside of this 4412 supply zone. The market sold off aggressively and then overnight continued to sell off into this demand zone where we found a, uh, a buyer and a bid. Then the market rallied into this FOMC meeting on Friday and we were going into the weekend with solid structure. Why were we going into the weekend with solid structure? Well, A, we bounced off the 4263 demand zone and B, we were creating demand on the way up and C, we were going to test the upper supply that was the upper range of balance. The move out of balance usually indicates continuation. Um, and the last time we tested the supply that was created at FOMC, we sold off. So Friday having a strong closed inside of supply and then the market all overnight uh, into Monday morning consolidated inside of supply, which is why the plan on Monday wanted to lean towards the bull side. If we can create demand above 4412 or we could have a strong bullish move with strong volume above 440. Uh, when I see demand getting created inside of supply, that is a very bullish sign because think about it. If we have an area that sellers are actively present in the market and are responding to prices moving higher and they don't agree with higher prices, then the market is going to move down. That's when supply exceeds demand. The market will move back down. So then when we go back and test it, whether it be the next time or two times after it, three times after it, if we get a different reaction out of that supply zone where we once found sellers, then obviously a different reaction is going to bring a different result, which is why if we create a demand above 4412, that would have validated a strong acceptance from buyers buying at higher prices and new buyers factored into the market. Ideally, a nice pullback into demand would have been nice as well. We really haven't seen uh, us create demand inside of supply recently. This is something that uh, is new within the past three weeks. We saw it a few months ago. Um, but any demand above 4412 validated a continuation move above to test supply above at 4467 and then a zone higher. So essentially, if we go to a little bit of a higher time frame, 15 minute, let's just call it, uh, this consolidation right here validated by a move back above 4412 and then above 4440 created demand on the way up. So once we have our level of interest, again, this is structure, right? I'm going to show you an example in a few minutes of something that doesn't have structure and you're going to see how different it is. This is a day that we had structure. We had our levels planned out and it's our job as traders to read what price does at those levels to make quality trading decisions, aka understand the relationship between price and volume. So this day came into supply Buyers were buying at higher prices, created demand, strong break above it. Volatility was a little dead. I won't lie, it was a little difficult to get a proper trade with solid risk to reward other than this flag break and other than the demand being created demand up here when we broke above the 4430, 4440 area and it acted as support. But this constitutes as a valid long and it's our job as traders to find an entry point based on our system where it makes sense from a risk to reward standpoint. Then the market flagged out, broke the flag. Volume really didn't increase too well. Like I said, the volatility uh, was kind of weak on this rally on Monday, but then we continued to rally and it was just basically an all day, higher highs, higher lows. At this point, it was very, very difficult. Like I said, with lower volatility to find a clean entry point. That's what happens when there's lower, vol lower volatility in the market. Then the market aggressively started to sell off shake a bunch of weak hands out. I've been noticing this theme, usually on zero days to expiration, stop weak longs out. Then the market continues to rally and close strong by end of day. And then that was that on, on Monday. This is solid structure. I could read the context. Uh, this analysis is done before the market opens up. And then when it does open up, we have to be able to read it properly to put solid trades on. 
which is why in the intraday commentary tab, I post my thought process in real time as the market's developing. Uh, because these are skills that you get that develop with screen time and experience and seeing different markets and getting your eyes trained subconsciously to notice different things without you even realizing it. It's not really, it's very difficult to uh, properly understand without seeing it happen in real time. So now we have a little bit of a uh, flip of a switch. So now let me go back to my normal drawing set. And now we have Monday's action or Tuesday's action, excuse me, February 1st, start of the month. Yesterday, strong rally inside of supply, buyers very strong, uh, taking out those sellers. And now we're consolidating overnight. Let me pull up the pre-market plan uh, from today. This is where I want you to understand this very important. Uh, when there's structure, the third point, no tight ranges or slow moving action. That means there's no interest in participation in the market. Ideally, if we are trading, we want to get in when buyers get in or right before buyers get in when we get our confirmation signals. Same thing for the downside. We want to get on the same side as sellers. The market is a, it's a, it's a marketplace that buyers and sellers are agreeing on or transferring goods. When the market consolidates and we're in a very tight range, moving very slow, that means buyers and sellers are basically fighting for price. It's a constant tug of war battle. And that is when us traders usually take the worst trades because we can't hop on the same side as a buyer or as a seller if the buyers and sellers actually in the market are trying to fight it out and they're in equilibrium or playing a big tug of war battle. We want to hop on the same side as the side that's winning that battle. So today's plan, pull this up here, uh, called for before the market even opened. I said ES Spy might provide some tricky action today as I don't see much stopping us from rallying inside of supply. The question is, do we have strength from buyers to take us there? And that's to be determined with today's action. I said I'm going to be watching for a rally into supply where I'm going to be looking to either play puts or take it long. But if we don't get a rally, the market pull back into demand and it could possibly turn into balance today. That is the key point with this video is the market could possibly turn into balance. I have a 28 long minute video in the course of balanced versus imbalanced days. There are some key signs. I'm going to briefly get into them here without too much detail uh, going into what's in the course video. But today was a balanced video. And that's the whole idea with this. A lot of traders um, you are, treat every day the same without any awareness of the context and without any awareness of the conditions we are trading in. So in the first 30 minutes, it did look like we were selling off. I will not lie. I was leaning towards the bear side. But there was no supply that was hit. There was no demand that was tested. There was no key level. There was, there was nothing. There was just a move down, sellers aggressively entering the market, and I really didn't see much or any valid thesis for me to get short. I could only speak for myself and how I trade. Others, even in the Discord, took the market short this morning at the open and made a killing on the short side. I could only explain what I see, how I trade, and how I do things. So in the first 30 minutes, we were selling off, and then the first hour usually gives a good indication of the tone that's gonna be set for the day in the market. And in the first hour, we were very flat, we were consolidating, and you could kinda of see it from the chart now, but in real time, developing this relationship with price and volume, we were moving very slow, we weren't you know, trading in a range, we didn't have supply or demand, we didn't have support or resistance, there was no levels of interest being hit. Like I said, we had uh, supply above, and demand below and we were basically in the inside of it trying to figure out what was going on so before the market open, even opened up i didn't have any solid structure you know it was 50 50. we could rally inside a supply or we could move down into demand it's really something that we didn't know before the market opened up and when the market did open up we were in this very tight range the first hour we were very flat and like i said number three no tight ranges or slow moving action you can see the tight ranges after it happens. The slow moving action is what you're going to see in real time when your eyes get trained to see this st stuff. It's not definitive. 
It's not something you could uh, fully understand without seeing it. But slow moving action and tight ranges means there's not one side winning. They're fighting it out. And when they're fighting it out, there's no interest or solid participation in the market. Uh, so then we tried to rally. We tried to go for the high a day. We broke above resistance by two ticks, half a point, and then failed. When I see that, it's not a good sign for continuation. And seeing the action that we saw today so far in the first three hours at this point, we we're very flat. It is a good sign to not trade this or scalp it. You can make money on these conditions. I will not say that. These are scalping conditions. But if you are looking to trend trade this or catch a bigger move when the market is in balance, you are going to struggle and you are going to force trades that you shouldn't have taken to begin with that could have been avoided. A lot of traders treat a day like yesterday where there was clear direction, there was solid structure, and there was valid participation in the market, just like yesterday, right? They would treat because, you know, either they had FOMO from yesterday, they didn't take the move, or they did take it and they want to make more money today. It all relates back to emotions and your want or need to make money and be active in the market. Today, the market opened up. Those traders that either had FOMO or want to make more money are going to treat yesterday and think the same thing is going to happen today subconsciously without them realizing it. Their brain is a mechanism that tries to either protect them at all costs or it tries to make them happy and win at all costs. And that's really bad in trading. Our brain is our worst enemy unless you could properly control it. So then um, we were consolidating and in the intraday commentary tab, I did not take this trade because I know these conditions. I force setups and I take the most amount of losses in these conditions. That's something you develop with your journal. So I do everything to try to avoid them. And if my analysis is right, or, you know, I, I could have taken a trade, good. There will be an opportunity tomorrow. There will be an opportunity next week. There are plenty of opportunities in the market. So I said, balance conditions, thesis is skewed. Uh, this is the commentary tab. This is where I basically post my thought process throughout the day. Uh, I said, if ES could break the 4514 resistance with strong buying volume, I don't see why we can't rally first into 4523. And then if we could create demand above, the next supply is 4546. By end of day, power hour, as soon as 3 o'clock hits, strong volume came in the market. I did not take this. And we rallied right inside a supply. But the first five and a half hours of the market opened up, uh, you know, like I said, you could scalp it because I know I'm going to have people say, oh, you know, I made a lot of money today. But the majority of people, the people that I'm trying to help, um, you were going to force setups when the market's balanced. There was no structure. We didn't have buyers being stronger than sellers or sellers being stronger than buyers. It was just consolidation and it was continuation from the overnight session. The real move came in power hour where we broke out with strong volume. That strong volume says buyers are winning. Buyers are showing aggression. Maybe hop on the same side as buyers. This, in my opinion, was the best setup today. Right into supply. A nice 30-point move into supply in a quick hour. Your spy contract would have went up 100, 200, even 300%. Um, so know when to trade. You develop these things through screen time and experience, reviewing your journal, and understanding the auction of the market properly. It's also all about taking high quality trades and understanding what a low quality trade is to you. You want to trade when the probabilities are in your favor. That's when I take the best trades. That's when I make the most amount of money. And that's when I get the best results. And I'm sure a lot of people watching this are going to agree that sometimes they trade now that they understand this in this range where we're consolidating, really not doing much price is moving very slow and sideways. And that's when the trades really could be avoided. And this is when I view it as a lower probab probability of a setup. The market's more about sitting on your hands than it is actually being active. I stress patience a lot. And it's really a key component in trading successfully, knowing when to strike and knowing when to sit sidelined. So I'm going to leave you all off on that note. If you enjoyed it, drop a like, comment if you have any questions, and be sure to check out the links in the description below. I offer a very in-depth an educational course that comes with access to the Discord and no extra charge. Uh, there are tons of videos and there are tons of value in the course. Definitely check it out. But besides that, I'm ending it. Peace out.